Hello everyone and welcome back to another Stormworks video. In today's video we are going to be going ahead and building a multi-floor elevator. We'll go through all the different components that you need uh, along with the different logic sections that you need to go ahead and wire up. Uh, we'll break down the video into four different sections. The first section will be actually to get the elevator or lift to go up and down. The second section will be to add the controls to the elevators to obviously tell it what floor you want to go to. And then lastly, we'll add in the last two sections, which is going to be the outer doors on each floor to only open when you're on that desired floor. And then lastly, the inner door of the elevator itself, once again, to only open when you've hit your desired floor. With that said, uh, as you can see in front of me, I have the example already built here. Uh, we'll go ahead and just show you exactly what we're going to be going through. Uh, as you can see, we have four different levels with the lift inside it itself. Uh, inside the lift, we have obviously our buttons to go to depending on what floor we want. We have a little digital display and then we also have a light. So the digital display is going to tell us what floor we're currently on. So if you can see here, if we go ahead and click, we want to go to the first floor. You can see now we are now climbing up and we should hit the first floor and our doors open. And the same goes for all, all the other floors. If I go to the third floor, we'll see we're slowly climbing up to the third floor. And then when we go ahead, we should be able to reach that and then we can jump out. Uh, and then the last thing is obviously is the controls on the outside. If we say that the lift is on the top and we want it to come down to the bottom, just press a simple button and then eventually waiting for it to come down, it should eventually then come and reach the last floor takes a little bit of time and there you go so that's pretty much about it uh we'll go ahead and we'll get building so we're back here in the workbench itself uh first off is obviously as always guys everything i've done in the tutorial is pretty much for the tutorial itself uh it might not be the quickest or the easiest or the best way to do it however it, the purpose of it is to obviously explain different processes and then hopefully give you the knowledge to go ahead and build it yourself so once that's done, um, we can obviously see in front of me, I've gone ahead and just built the base of the actual elevator itself, same as how we usually do for most tutorials. Uh, and then second off, I've actually built the shaft itself, uh, just making sure that each floor is the same uh, height. So for the purpose of the tutorial, I've gone ahead and done 10 blocks for each floor. Uh, we'll get into the reasoning behind that later on, uh, but it is important that you make sure that each floor is the same level. Now, the first thing we're going to be covering is obviously how to get the elevator to go up and down and then also how to make sure that it's going to stop on each floor depending on what number value we give it so to do that we obviously need components the first component we're going to be needing is obviously is a track base to go up and down now i'm going to be using the normal track base not the compact one now the reason why i'm using this is that the track bases themselves the normal ones give out a position of where they are on the base you can obviously use a compact one but then you would have to use a distance sensor along with that which i'm not going to be using for the purpose of this tutorial so with that done, we obviously need to make sure that it extends up and down. Now you can see the base of it is on the same height as the floor below. So we need to make sure it extends to the last floor, but make sure that it goes to the base of the last floor, which is over here. So once that's done, we now can add our logic on to control this. Now, as we did in this two-story elevator, we're going to be using a PID to control the elevator itself. So I'll go ahead and place that down. Now. First off, what we need to do is you can see that the PID is going to be controlling the track base. However, the, because we're using a large one, it only accepts on and off either to move up and down. So we need to convert that number, which is going to be either positive or negative, into an on off switch. To do that, we're going to be using threshold gates. So just two of them to place down. We get them connecting up, so it's going to send the number to there. These are then going to measure the number. So for example, this one is going to be connected to the up. This one will be connected to the down. So in order to make sure this goes up, we need to say, hey, if you're receiving any positive number, we want you to move up. So we can go ahead and do 0 0.01 and say 100. This number doesn't matter as long as it's above the, the height of your lift itself. So if you're needing three floors, that can only be three. It's up to you. Um, I'm just going to use 100 for the purpose of the tutorial. Next off is obviously to move down. So we say, hey, if you're receiving a value between minus 100 and minus 0 0.01, I want you to tell this thing to go up and down. So once we have that, that's obviously the basics. We need to configure our PID. Now, I'm just going to do a simple 0 0.1 and a 0 0.1 and then change that to zero. 
that's pretty much the basics. You shouldn't be, you shouldn't need to change that around much. Obviously, that whatever you give it will then vary on what number output is going to these. So if you were to add another zero to this, this would be lower, and obviously, uh, so on and so forth. Now, with that said, uh, I'm just going to go and change the speed of this. I want it to work at 1.8. Eight, so a little bit of a slower speed in comparison to what the default is, and that's just to get a smooth movement up and down the elevator itself. Now with that done, we obviously need to give the input to the PID. Now the variable is going to be what floor we're on, so we can connect that up. The set point is going to be our keypad to say, hey, I want to go to floor one, uh, to floor one two, three, or four, for example. Um, so that's what we're going to be entering with the keypad. So we can go ahead and connect that to our set point. We obviously need to make sure the PID is on. So we can go ahead and just give it a simple on signal. Now you're probably thinking, well, hold on. Same as the problem we had with the last, last tutorial is that this measures in meters and one meter is four blocks. So it's going to, it's going to think that when we go up four blocks, that's our first floor, another floor box, the second floor. So we want to convert the meter reading instead of it being four blocks we want it to be 10 blocks so you use simple equation where you do we're on 10 blocks as a floor so 10 divided by 4 is going to be 2.5 so we need to divide that number output of the position by 2.5 now you can either use a function block or you can go ahead and use a divide block i'm going to be using a divide block for this tutorial and then we simply need to obviously add a number which is going to divide by so we're going to take that slider output where it is on the track Take that, divide it by a number, and then send it to the process variable, the PID itself. So we can go ahead and configure this, as I said, to the simple equation. So whatever your, your height of your floor, the purpose of the tutorial is 10, divide that by 4, which is the blocks in the meter, and you get your number value, so mine is 2.5. Once we have that done, we just need to make sure that we obviously have all our electric connected. Uh, we need a battery because we're in advanced mode, so I'll simply just go ahead and place a battery down now in the corner of our tutorial. Go ahead, power this all up, and then we'll actually spawn this in and make sure that it actually is going up and down the track as it should be. So you can see now we're obviously giving a value of zero, so it's now on the ground floor. If we were to go ahead and give it a value of one, it should now climb up to where it meets one. So you can see now it's reached our first floor, and then same goes if we give it a value of two, it should go ahead and climb up to the second floor. Fantastic. So that's all working. Great. Well, now we can go ahead and start working on our other components. So the next thing we need to do is obviously to add the lift itself to, to the build. So I'm just going to go and simply just build a base here inside. Nothing fancy, just a simple base. Obviously, in your own build, this might change the size, the diameter, the width, whatever. Um, but for the purpose of the story, I'm just going to simply put it here. Now, what we need to do is we obviously want buttons inside our lift itself to tell us which floor we want to go to instead of having a key input. So we need to add our push buttons in here. I'm gonna, that's what I'm going to be using for this tutorial, sorry. Um, so when you push a button, you say, hey, I want to be on floor one, and it's going to tell us to go to floor one. Simply go and add... Because we have four floors, we need to obviously go ahead and add our four different floors there. Once we have that done, we can move on to the next part. So the next part is we need to have a way somehow to convert these push buttons to numbers to send to our actual PID itself. Now, how we're we going to be doing that is we're going to be using switch boxes. So we'll go ahead and obviously because we have four floors, we need to add down four different switch boxes themselves. So we got those down, we then also need to have numbers to pass through them. So pretty much how it's going to work is if we push that button down, it's then going to send that number that we have programmed. So for example, floor one, floor two, floor three, it's going to send it through the signal box over to our PID itself. So we can see here, ground zero floor. So as soon as we're pushing that button, it's sending the number through to our actual PID. Now we can go ahead and delete that. We don't need the keypad anymore because we're operating it by use of the push buttons themselves. Now, because we have that done, um, we obviously need to take these four numbers and add them all up before we can send them to the PID. So to do that, we're just going to be using a simple AND. So we take two of them and then a final one to join them all together. So you can see here, if we go ahead and add those two, add those two together, and then we simply send them out 
to that, then we can then go ahead and connect that to our PID. However, what means now is that when we're pushing this value, so say we push one, it's then going to send a one value through all this to our PID and tell us we need to go to floor one as per how we set it up earlier on. Now, this is only going to work as long as we're holding down these push buttons. Now, a way to get around that is we actually use a memory register. Now, a memory register is something that you can use to input a value and hold that value in there until you actually set it or clear it again. So pretty much what we're going to be doing is we're going to be taking our, add our final value out of here, whichever floor we want to go to, send it to the value to store. So it's going to hold that value. It's then going to send it to our actual set point, And it's going to hold it there for as long as we want until we go ahead and either clear it or set it. Now we want to obviously set it every time we want to change floor. So we need to take these four push buttons and actually get them connected to the set button here. So to do that, we also need to add those up together or either connect them to ORs. So we can go ahead and use another three of those. So you can see here, if we push any of these buttons, which is in theory to go ahead and actually set a floor itself, add them all together. And once we push them, it's then going to go ahead and set that value. So whether it's a one, it's going to go through here, go to here, and you're going to say, hey, I want to hold on a number and it's going to constantly be one until we go ahead and set another number to push through and so on and so forth. So that done, we need to make sure all our trick is connected and go spawn this in and check if it's working. You see here, we're obviously giving it a zero at the moment because we're on the ground floor. So it's not moving up at the moment. Give it a one. And you can see now it's outputting a one to that set point and it's going to hold one for as long as we're on here. You can see all these buttons are now not pressed at all. If we want to go to the second floor, it's now going to go send us two through, set it, and then that's what it's going to turn us to two. And if we want to go back down to zero, it's going to send zero through and bring us all the way down to zero. That's pretty much Now the next part we're going to be doing is adding the actual doors to the lift itself on the outside of each floor. So we'll just go ahead and grab our simple sliding doors. Oh, fantastic. And we'll just place one on each floor that we have for this elevator itself. Now to get these to actually open and close when the lift is on that floor, we're obviously going to be measuring where the lift is depending on where it is on the rail. So we've already configured it to only measure zero, one, two, or three. So we obviously want these door to doors to then open whether it's on zero, one, two, or three. So to do that, we're going to be using our threshold gates again. So you can see here, we'll just go ahead and place four down, one for each floor. So we're obviously saying, well, hey, what floor are you on? Okay, you're on zero, one, two, or three. And then we want you to go ahead and open the door depending on what floor we're on. However, if we currently set it like that and connect this up straight to the door now, it's going to open every time it reaches that point. So say if we're going to the third floor, as we're going past the first floor, second floor, it's going to go ahead and open the doors. And we don't want that. So we then have to go ahead, excuse me, and measure it against which floor we actually want to be on. Now, that's great because we're actually getting a number of value out of this, depending on what floor we want. So we can also measure that now. So we can take another four of these and measure it against what floor we actually want to be on. So we've got all that connected up. We'll go ahead and configure this. As I said, this is where we are on the slider. So for example, on the slider, we are going to be, if it's on 0 .00, 0 point, hold on, 0 0.9, 0 0.99 or 1.01, .01, it's going to send a signal. Um, we need to just go ahead and actually, this is for the ground floor. So sorry, zero point minimum is 0 0.1. And this is 0 0.1. Next will be if we're in, for example, 0 0.99 and 1.1. So you just want to give it a one degree variable. Um, sometimes it just doesn't tick over. So you always want to make sure you have that one degree variable. So 0 0.99, 1 and 2.01. And then if we're on 2.99 or 3.01, it's going to open. And then the next one is we do simply 0, 1, 2, and 3. Fantastic. 
So once we have that done, we now can obviously go ahead and add all these different signals up to the relevant doors so that it opens up. So we need to go obviously go ahead and use quite a few blocks here. So we want to say if both of these are on, then it's only going to open the floor up. So we just use the and block. So we just need four of these, one, two, three, four. And then we're going to go ahead and start connecting all these up. And then we'll go ahead and I'll test this out and show you exactly what it's going to be doing, guys. So this is going to go to our ground floor. So when, when it measures that we want to be on the ground floor and also the track is on the ground floor, it's only then going to open up the door. Same goes for first floor, second floor, and third floor. While we're here, we can always go inside here and say ground first, second, and third. Perfect. Make sure we have power to anything else that we've put in here. Obviously, we need power to the doors. And you can see now that because the elevator is on the ground floor, it's automatically opened the ground floor um, hatch itself. If we go up to the first floor, Ground floor closes, and then you'll see once we reach this floor, it's gone ahead and opened the elevator. Same goes if, for example, we go straight to the third floor. See, it's not opening this now because we don't want it to be on that floor. It's only going to open when we've reached this top floor. And I know the problem here is that it's not reading the correct value, so we just need to make sure that it's not reading the correct value. So you can see, for some reason, it only sends out a 2.8, sorry, a 3, yeah. 2.8 so if you see if we change this to 2.8 and go and test it now for some reason it's always just the last floor you need to just lower that last value so I'll go straight to the th last floor that doesn't open which is great this one open which is great and then it should now reach the top floor and you can see now it's opened this. For some reason it just doesn't go out the copper output. So once we have that done, the last thing we need to go ahead and add is obviously the door inside the elevator. And we want that to open at our only the floor that we've desired. So for example, we'll just go ahead and add the actual door itself. Give that some power. And then how we're going to connect that is we're going to say, well, hold on. If any of these are going to be actually opening we want the door inside here to open at the same time so what we need to do is take once again we've got that signal coming through to the different doors we want to say if any of these are coming through as an on signal we want that door to open so once again we just need to take all four of these add them together simply by doing sorry an or switch let's grab a or if i can find it there we go we need three of these again because we have four outputs and you simply just go ahead and take your outputs which are con currently controlling the doors on each floor connect that all up to here and then send it to the inner door itself go ahead jump on as you can see now it will open at only the floor that we desire so go ahead say second floor both doors close we'll go up and as soon as we reach the second door floor both doors open. Fantastic. So that's that done. The last thing we want to do is we obviously need to add a button to any of these floors uh, so we can obviously call the lift itself. Now we're just going to be doing a simple way of just going ahead and using push buttons. So I'll just add a push button to each one of these floors and then we can actually rename it to say call lift. Fantastic. And then I'll just name all of these call lift and then what you can simply do is you can simply connect these up to the actual controls inside the lift itself. So that's to our ground floor. So we're actually telling it, hey, I want you to go to that floor. So the same as almost as like being inside the elevator. However, uh, we're just controlling it from externally. And then last thing is we obviously want a digital display inside our lift to tell us what floor we're currently on. So we'll just go ahead and grab our digital display, place it down over here. And then we're going to be connecting that up to our meter reading of what floor we're currently on at the moment. And then lastly, we're just going to give it power. Give all the buttons power on the outside. 
spawn that in and then you can see now we're obviously on the ground floor both doors are open we can jump inside uh, we're on the ground floor first floor please it's slowly starting to climb first floor both doors are opened and then say if you were on a different floor you can say i want to call the lift doors will close lift will then come down and then open once it's reached up and you can carry on and do it for whatever watch floor you want um and that's that's pretty much about it guys um I won't talk about it anymore or do any more detailing or anything like that. Obviously, you can add as much detailing as you want, make this as big or as small as you want to. Uh, it's really up to you. Add whatever features you want to it. But that's pretty much the basics controls um, and to how to do it. Uh, you can obviously, as I said, make this taller, shorter, less floors, more floors. You can extend it to as much as you want just by pretty much copying the logic that we've gone through in this tutorial itself. Uh, and adding different more components and so on and so forth to it um, so yeah that's about it as always i hope you've enjoyed the video and found it somewhat informative and useful as always don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe for future content there is a lot more videos coming out very soon along with a couple of different new series and a few other youtubers hopefully will be joining the channel also and we'll do some videos with them with that all said we'll see you in the next one